Hi, this is Enrique Guerra Medina from Art, Then and Now. Thank you for joining us today. This podcast is designed to bring you trends, insights, history, works, and biographies of artists around the world, broadcasted from our studio in Lima, Peru. In today's show, we'll talk about the avant-garde movement. After World War I was launched in 1914, several things happened to the way we used to perceive our great and ubiquitous Occidental culture. The consequences of the 1914-1917 military confrontation between the Allies, the Entente Powers, and the Central Powers changed society completely. The total number of military and civilian casualties was around 40 million. There were 20 million deaths and 21 million wounded. The total number of deaths include 9.7 million military personnel and about 10 million civilians. As the battle line, birth rates went down because millions of young men died. Civilians lost their homes and fled to other countries. The role of women also changed. They played a major part in replacing men in factories and offices. Many countries gave women more rights after the war had ended, including the right to vote. The upper classes lost their leading role in society. Young middle and lower class men and women demanded a say in forming their country after the war. These new voices were loud and clear and wanted a different kind of society. They strongly opposed to the traditional way of thinking the traditional way of making politics, and the traditional way art used to reflect the status quo. As Los Angeles Times points out in its July 21, 2012 edition, under the article titled Art Forever Changed by World War I. Quote, Along with millions of idealistic young men who were cut to pieces by machine guns and obliterated by artillery shells, there was another major casualty of World War I, traditional ideas about Western art. Unquote. Traditional ideas about Western art were part of the casualties of that cruel stage in human history. They died to allow other ideas to emerge, but these new ideas were not coming this time from the top, but from the very bottom. New forms of expressions were needed to understand the undergoing chaos of modern civilization. <laughs> The development of journalism and photography inspired the creation of a form of art that tried to reflect reality as accurately as possible. The anti-romantic movement in Germany had just killed the idealistic thinking and representations of romanticism are put aside to look for scenes that could reflect reality the way it was. But as part of modernism, Realism takes advantage of modern technological discoveries and inventions to reinforce the idea of reflecting the world from a distant point of view. 
no commitment is made to change society, but admiration to science, productivity, and modern life are the main characteristics. During and after World War I, a great response came from intellectual elites that started questioning decision makers on their active participation in favor of the war machinery. The prestige that decision makers used to have started being cracked as the world reached its plateau. <laughs> As we said before, 20 million people were killed and 20 million were wounded. The emotional shock was enormous, and as long as millions of youngsters died in the battlefield and others were assassinated or got irreparable wounds as part of the collateral damage, suffering and desperation spread all over their families. More than five decades before World War I, the avant-garde movement had started in France in the 1850s, according to some, with the realism of Gustave Courbet. This artistic movement was associated to socialist ideas at the beginning. Gustave Courbet himself was strongly influenced by socialism. That is why he was labeled as a dangerous revolutionary during the French Revolution in 1848. Like him, his acquaintances were in opposition to the artistic and literary academicism. This is the main point here, a rupture to the academic art principles and rules to express art in a freer way. Rules represented an obstacle to express real art. Works from this time become experimental, radical, or unorthodox with respect to art, culture, or society. This was the beginning. Along its path, a lot of movements started to show up. This is especially true after World War I, which triggered these experimental and radical ideas about art until present day. The list of avant-garde movements is long. It goes from abstract expressionism, conceptual art, constructivism, cubism, dadaism, expressionism, fauvism, symbolism, to surrealism. Their conceptions vary, but what all have in common is this persistent will of making changes not just in terms of art, but in terms of the development of superior forms of social and political movements that could meet the future needs of a better world. We can finish this podcast with John F. Kennedy's site, quote, Great crises produce great men and great deeds of courage, unquote. <laughs> That's it for today. Have a nice day.